The concept of editing is central to any approach to film work because film is the quintessential art of the combination and arrangement of different elements, visual and sound. It is special editing that organizes the film in its continuity, in its rhythm and duration. The installation of modern principles were established when, in the early years of cinema, filmmakers have realized that they could manipulate time not only within the shots, but also by the arrangement thereof between them. From the First World War, the editor of the basic unit is the shot, in other words, a fragment to be combined with others to build the narrative unity of the scene. The capacity of editing to produce a meaning that existed only in virtual state in each of the assembled fragments is demonstrated experimentally by Russian filmmaker Lev Kulshov. Lev Kulshov realized in 1921 a famous experiment in which he will leave his name. It is about associating the same close-up of a character to other shots that have no direct relation to him, while also showing these associations to viewers asking them what they understood. When asked about the feelings evoked by the same close-up of the actor, viewers will recognize successfully greed, sorrow, or desire. This is the experimental demonstration that all images are potentially rich in a number of meanings that are not his own, but as a result of its association with other images. This is a truth that the filmmakers had long realized intuitively. The main merit of the famous Kolshov effect is particularly to testify how the reflection on the production of meaning through cinema was early focused on the functions of the assembly. In filmmaking, a montage is an editing technique in which short shots are juxtaposed to represent actions or ideas. It is used to consciously convey subjective messages through the juxtaposition of shots, which are related in composition or movement. Montage editing uses close-ups, relatively frequent cuts, dissolves, superimposition, fades, and jump cuts. The real question in editing is how will we correctly build the story? Multiple Oscar-winning film editor and sound designer, Walter Murch, answers this question in his book, In the Blink of an Eye. Indeed, Murch talks about the concept of the rule of six, six elements of the construction of history by editing which he described prioritization. He quotes, what I'm suggesting is a list of priorities. If you have to give up something, don't ever give up emotion before story. Don't give up story before rhythm. Don't give up rhythm before eye trace. Don't give up eye trace before planarity. And don't give up planarity before spatial continuity. First, emotion. How can a cut emotionally influence the public at this point of the film? During editing, it is important to ask whether the cut allows to convey the emotion induced in the scene. Does the public experience and feel the scene from the movie as it is in real life? Merch says that emotion in a film needs to be preserved at all costs. Second, story. Editing must serve the story. Indeed, editing must allow the story to move forward by removing passages too slow or boring to keep the rhythm of the story. Third, rhythm. Editing does not only produce meaning, it also produces effects of rhythm linked not only to the length of the mounted shots, but also in their relative duration. That means their relationship with the shots that precede and follow them. The extraordinary violence of the shower murder scene in the Hitchcock Psycho holds not only the exceptional brevity of the shots composed, but also their peaceful opposition to the slowness of the shots that frame them. Fourth, eye trace. During editing, one is always thinking about how to catch the eye of the viewer. We must not confuse the viewer. The cut should be fitting to get the effect expected on the public. Continuity must be preserved as much as possible. Action movies are the first to violate this rule due to the number of movements that follow the action, especially in the fighting scenes. At last, planarity and spatial continuity. What Merch calls planarity is the transposition of three dimensions to two dimensions. Merch therefore speaks here of the 180 degree rule. Do not cross the line. Indeed, a filmmaker or editor must know the rules before you break them. During editing, make sure that the cut does not break the line of 180 degrees. In other words, do not have a movement from left to right in one shot, and in the following shot, a movement from right to left. This allows the viewer to have spatial cues and to correctly situate the characters and objects in space. 
Breaking the 180 degree line is a good way to disorientate the audience if it's the intended purpose or inducing a message. For example, in The Shining, the scene of the butler and Jack Nicholson in the toilet. The line is broken when Jack Nicholson realizes he is talking to a ghost which is the previous guard before him who murdered his family. By breaking the line, Stanley Kubrick wants us to understand that the butler and Nicholson have exchanged places and induced that Nicholson will soon kill his family. Now that we know how to build our story correctly, is it possible to play with the viewer? Of course, just by using a technique called misdirection. This technique is used by filmmakers and editors to mislead the audience. Indeed, as the story progresses, more and more elements are unveiled and leads the viewer to believe that the outcome will be realized in such a way. However, at the last moment, other elements are upsetting this theory. It is always surprising. That is the power of misdirection. Let's finish with a quote by one of the pioneer directors in the film industry, Dziga Vertov. I am the cine eye, I am the mechanical eye. My machine, I show you the world as only I can see. This is where we work, we masters of sight, organizers of the visible life, master of words and sounds, the virtuoso montage of life.